Hey everybody and welcome to Friday Fruit Clips, episode number 68. I'm so very happy that you stop in to give some of your valuable time to watch this video. Now Friday Fruit Clips, of course, is my cutting edge, critically acclaimed, and award-winning weekly YouTube series where I expose the false prophets and the false teachers, those who are committed to shipwrecking the faith of followers of Jesus Christ. And yes, they target Christians in order to take them off of the path and onto the fables and doctrines of devils. So the first thing that I want to ask you to do is please go ahead and subscribe. Hit that thumbs up. I really appreciate it because it helps to spread the word and certainly affects the algorithms to get this information out there. And ooh, by the way, it is required. Sorry. Uh, hey, I don't make the rules. You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and take a look at our banner scripture, Ephesians 5.11. And it says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Now that means to expose them, and that's what we're going to do here today. Now, throughout this video, you'll see some pretty unbelievable things. You'll hear some ridiculous things that can be both hard to hear, but also it may make you laugh out loud because it's just that silly. And so I want to tell you, you know, don't panic if you find yourself laughing. Sometimes you have to laugh or you just might find yourself going a little bit crazy. It's okay, folks. And, well, I think that covers everything. So if you're ready... Go ahead and plop down in that lazy boy there and grab some Boston baked beans and a Shasta and just take a deep breath because we're going to kick this thing wide open. You ready? Let's do it. Here we go. All right, so first up, we are taking a look at this channel right here. It's called Lovely God. You can see the young lady there uh her name is liang or lang i'm not sure and you can see here that she says that she's a seer and so what we're going to do is listen to a couple of clips starting with this video you can see the title god asks me to warn you something's going to happen so i'm going to leave it up to you after listening to this if you think that liang here is a prophetess or a seer as she says Let's go ahead and roll that first clip. The Lord asked me to let some people know that you or one of your family members or several of your family members, something is going to happen to you or them. Okay. Uh, it could be somebody in your family is getting sick or uh, doesn't know there's some sickness in their body, they need to get a check by the doctor as soon as possible. If uh, you or your family member uh, feel like something wrong with their health or something, I suggest you to see doctors right away or ask them to check it with starter, okay? For some of you, the Lord said, there's a, a big argument or fight will happen inside your family. Maybe it's a, between you and your spouse or your parents or your children. Uh, one or two more of you will have some argument or even fight or conflict. Something is going to happen, okay, inside your family. For some of you, the Lord said, there's something going to happen to one of your family members. The thing will affect this family member's job or work or even business. All right, so this is absolutely insane. This is cruel. 
First of all, did you notice any pattern in this woman's alleged prophecy? Yeah, she, she really likes the word or. And you know what that means? That means that this is not prophecy. This is what you call, well, let's just make up vague stuff that can't be proven or disproven. She says, you are one of your family members or several of your family members. What? Wow. Okay. Uh, you're just left to guess. So absolutely no specificity. Uh, and then she literally says, something is going to happen to you. Something's going to happen. Wow, that's a great prophecy, right? Um, yeah, that's not prophecy. But here Liang is giving out blanket prophecies where she's telling anyone who might click on her video, you know, if you randomly click on this video, that, well, God says one of you is going to get sick. Might be you. Or it might be a family member. God just didn't give her the specifics on this. Uh, but she says, God says, go to the doctor, you or your family member, go, go get checked out. We don't know who it is, but everybody's getting checked out by the doctor, apparently. Uh, folks, do you know how evil this is? You know you're going to have people, she's going to get people to go to the doctor, uh, those who are trapped under her delusion. They're going to go get checked out. They're going to get their family members checked out. They're going to have expensive testing done because Liang here said God said to do it. When clearly they just randomly clicked on this video and now they're what tens of thousands of dollars in the hole because Liang told them to go to the doctor and they're all sitting out there trying to figure out well who's sick. God's saying somebody's sick, but we just don't know. Could be me, could be my son, could be my daughter, could be my husband, could be my wife. This is cruel. It's crazy and it's evil. And so she's all over the place with this silly fake prophecy. But let's go ahead and listen to the next clip. And uh, pray for your investment because Lord say about property. So maybe you have some rental property, okay? for your investment, maybe. Or you invest your money in your stock market or somewhere, okay? He said, this is a very serious uh, warning and it will happen. How? Again. Wow. All right, could you understand that? I, I really couldn't understand that, but it seems like a big part of Liang's shtick here is to confuse you and keep you guessing. But here is the alarming part, because just in case Liang here didn't bankrupt you, you know, with endless medical bills caused by doctor's visits because you're trying to test all of your family for this mysterious sickness, uh, she now wants to infiltrate your finances via investments. Well, because God says, well, this is a warning and it's very serious. So now she's got people fearful about their investments. And yes, they are listening to her. So yeah, she wants to apparently wreck all parts of your life. And again, this all a blanket prophecy. It's for whoever is going to listen to this and become instantly paranoid and think that this is actually from God. Folks, this is not from God. These are the incoherent ramblings of an internet fraud that's Liang here. This is just absurd. One of the most absurd things that I've seen when it comes to these false internet prophets. Now, as we close this segment, I want to point something out to you just so you can be assured of what I'm saying that this woman is a fraud. I want you to look at her video library. Look at this video right here. When I take this off, look what the title is there. Uh, she entitled this, God is worried about you. Now, folks, this is antithetical to Holy Scripture. And this is really where you can believe what I'm telling you, that this, this girl is a fraud. God is worried about you, she said. Now, this woman's lying about God Almighty. You think God's worried about you? This is disgusting. This is absolutely outrageous. All right, folks, come on over to Matthew. We're in chapter 6. If you are familiar with the Bible, you know these passages where Jesus told us not to worry. And you can pretty much start and... Well, the whole chapter, but verse 27 through 34. But it culminates in 34, where Jesus says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. This is Jesus telling us not to worry. Do not worry. So if Jesus is telling us not to worry, why do you think Liang has any authority to tell the listener that Jesus is worried about us? 
he'd be contradicting his own teachings. And as far as I'm concerned, folks, that's blasphemy. And it's par for the course with Liang. So with that, we're going to conclude that, number one, she's not a prophet or a teacher. And certainly we're going to mark her and avoid her. All right. So with that, let's move on to our next segment. All right. So next up, we're looking at Maddie Nottage. Now we're going to be watching a clip from this, one of her latest service videos. I want you to note the time on this video here. Look at that. It's over five hours. Just amazing. Now, Maddie, is, she's a charismatic false teacher, and she looks like she can throw down with the best of them. And believe me, you're going to see that in this clip. Uh, but I want to play this clip. It's going to run about two minutes, so certainly some endurance is required, especially because the band is just playing in repetition over and over again. It gets hard to listen to. So certainly feel free to mute it, but make sure you watch just the chaotic frenzy of this theater and see if you can decide whether you think this is sober minded and orderly, you know, like church or that it glorifies God or again, it's just chaos. So let's go ahead and roll this first clip. Yeah, so this certainly is chaotic. I would certainly classify this as frenzy. Maddie just walks around the joint like she's a total rock star. And these people just allow her to abuse them in any fashion she chooses. It's very sad to watch. You know, she smacks people around in the heads and other body parts. She's always... Look at that. That's abuse right there. You think these people came to church, right? You think they're going to learn about Jesus. They're going to hear the gospel. And she grabs bottled water and just starts dousing them. And it, it's, it, it seems very cultish, doesn't it? I'm just kind of taking my time and just commenting as we watch this because this is not church. This is not edifying to the body of Christ. This is abuse. You can see her, she's doing her spit blowing. <sighs> and she just, throws, she just throws the bottle down. So I guess she thinks she's just this great woman of God, but this is just not the case. I'm just fascinated by this for all the wrong reasons. Again, I know I keep saying it, but this is abuse. And you're just seeing more and more of this in these times as these people just think they're untouchable. Again, just the way she hits people, it's abuse. So it's not right. 
it's not holy. It certainly does not edify the church again. Where's the gospel? Well, it's nowhere. And look how she grabs this poor woman's injured arm. Because I have no doubt Maddie thinks she's someone great, but look at, look at this, how she shakes this arm. She didn't know what's wrong with this arm. This poor woman is probably in such uh, a state of frenzy. Maybe she's blocked out the pain. But I can tell you one thing. If I saw Maddie or anyone, any preacher or teacher, shaking one of my loved one's broken arm or injured arm like this, I would certainly put a stop to it. Where Where is this woman's loved ones? It's just terrible. So I wanted to just do this, uh, show this clip, because, folks, this is unholy. You know, tongues is misused throughout. And let's just state the obvious here. Maddie should be in no position of leadership. And she certainly shouldn't be usurping authority over men in the church. This is all just so unbiblical. Let me show you something. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And I know I show this often, but it certainly bears repeating. Look at verse 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. Now, what you just watched, was that decently? Was it order? No, it was the opposite. It was undecent, or rather indecent, and out of order. If we come over to 1 Peter, we're in chapter 1, look at verse 15. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. So certainly what we watched here with Maddie Nottage is not holy. So we're going to continue to mark her and avoid her at all costs. And with that, let's move on to the next clip. All right, so next up, we're going to go back in time, and we're going to pull a clip out of the vault. Yeah! We're going to play it here today because it's one of the most devastating clips which really exposed Benny Hinn for the absolute charlatan that he is. So first I'm going to play this clip, and then I'm going to comment on the other side. Go ahead and roll it. Anybody could make up anything. Someday somebody's going to do that. And what are you going to say then? I don't know. I can't tell you now. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. Oh, yes, it has. Remember that woman supposedly cured of polio? Pastor Benny knows it made for a great episode of his TV show. He knows it probably helped squeeze even bigger donations from his flock. But there's something he doesn't know. Pastor, Steve, all I know is... Pastor, let me, let me just... No, no, let me say something. Go ahead. That woman works for us. Woman doesn't have polio, never did. Then why did she say she had? We put her up there to see if he could tell her story was not true. To see if it would matter. To see if he would ever check. And you sat right here and told me a few moments ago, we never put him on television unless we checked. You never called that woman. You never called her doctor. You did no checking whatsoever. Well, she was one we missed. So just absolutely amazing. Here was Benny Hinn, infiltrated by Dateline. I think it was Dateline. It, it might have been a different news organization, but infiltrated nonetheless. Uh, here was an employee of that news organization pretending like she had polio, and Hinn was unable to detect the difference. He got caught lying about the fact that his organization didn't do follow-up or check on this person, and he just makes excuses for it all. Now, sadly, this expose should have ended Hinn's career, but because delusion and denial is so powerful with the people, Hinn's career didn't suffer at all. In fact, it grew. And the most shocking aspect about this all is that Hinn just has no conscience. It is absolutely seared. He has zero fear of the living God. It's just amazing. Caught red-handed. We wanted to just show this again because it's worth seeing. We need to not let these guys off the hook. So let me show you something here. We're in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3. Now, this is a chapter, even as you read verse 1, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Describes what it's going to be like in the last days. 
we come down to verse 13, look what it says. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. This is the verse that came to mind after I watched that clip. Because Benny Hinn really defines this. He is an evil man. And certainly he seduces. And so I wanted to read this verse so that we can confirm what's happening in these end times. And so with that, just a quick segment. Certainly continue to mark and avoid Benny Hinn at all costs. And we will move on to the next segment. All right, folks. So next up, we've got just one of the fakest prophets on social media, period. No! 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 And you know, she's also one of the most annoying and irritating. I can't even. Well, but here she is, Christy Jesse, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! Right. Now, I have featured this woman before on Friday Fruit Clips, but when I saw this video, I knew I was going to do a short segment just, again, to expose the blasphemy of this very shallow deceiver. Because right now, she's out there shipwrecking the faith of a vast multitude. And it's just hard to believe that anybody believes her. Look at the title. Hey, boo, someone's watching you. A prophetic word. She's attributing these words to God Almighty. Look, she's got almost 80,000 subs that believe her nonsense. It's not true. That's impossible. And so I'm going to play a very short clip so you can just see how silly this woman is. And then we'll comment on the other side. Go ahead and roll that clip. <laughs> so this word, you guys, um, is called Hey Boo, Someone's Watching You. Hey Boo, Hey Boo, Someone's Watching You. Oh my gosh, you guys. All right, so that's it. That's the clip, and thank the Lord, because that's about all I can stomach from Christy Jesse. But folks, try to imagine the blasphemy here. She is outright mocking our holy God, and there's no doubt about it. She's reduced God down to speaking like a seventh grader, uttering words like, hey, boo. I don't know what else I can add to this spectacle. This is absolutely breathtaking. To deceive almost 80,000 people by attributing these words to God is so over-the-top unholy that it leaves one in actual shock. Wow, I just, it's amazing. This, this generation is amazing. So as I close this very short segment, please pray for her followers to awaken because I can tell you this, for those that believe Christy Jesse is true, that she's a true prophet, they've descended into such depth of delusion, uh, they're just in a lot of trouble. They need prayer. So please remember to pray for them. Pray for this woman, too, that she would stop her fake social media ministry of false prophecy. And with that, let's move on to our next segment. All right, everyone. So rounding off the show tonight, we've got none other than Bo Paulney. Absolutely. Take a look at this guy. Now, I featured this blaspheming potato before, and yes, he is notorious for teaching that Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven is, in fact, prophecy from God. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. I kid you not. But uh, take a look at the title, Trump from the Bloodline of King David. And yes, he is going to attempt to teach you exactly what you think he's going to teach you. And so we are going to listen to some of his content here while Bo continues his blasphemy of just making stuff up. Just making stuff up as he expresses his public adoration for Donald Trump. So. Let's uh, listen to that first clip. Go ahead and roll it. But in Isaiah 45, verse 2, interesting. But Trump was what president? 45? Mm -hmm. He's going to have apparently how many terms? Two? 45? Mm -hmm. He's going to have apparently how many terms? Two? 
All right, so absolutely wow. Wow, wow. Bo, who is so unbelievably obsessed with Donald Trump, that here he is again, isogeting Donald Trump, right, into scripture. His presidential number, his terms, he's isogeting him into the actual Bible. This is fantastic delusion on full display. It's amazing. Let's continue. And so Trump, believe it or not, brings in the kingdom. Who's the kingdom of David? The line of Judah. Where did Jesus Christ's bloodline come from? The kingdom, the line of David. The, the bloodline of David, meaning that means the return of Christ. Mm -hmm. So Messiah comes from the bloodline of David. This is all scriptural. So the Messiah comes from the bloodline of David. Jesus Christ came from the bloodline of David. When Christ returns, what's happening? We're going to see the return, listen closely, the return of the bloodline of David. From the day Trump was born to the day his first day in office was 70 years, 7 months, and 7 days. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., from the day he was born to the day he endorsed Trump, was the exact same number of hmm. days. 70 wow. years, 7 months. And seven days. All right, so clearly Bo is just making up numbers to fit his desired narrative. That's what he's doing here. And, and what is his desired narrative? Well, he wants Trump to be his messiah. He wants, really, what he wants is Trump to save his wealth, his prosperity, his way of life, right? That's what they all want. And it doesn't bother him that he takes the glory which belongs only to Jesus Christ and places that glory on Trump. That's what they're doing here. Now, thousands of people, they watch Bo and they listen to what he teaches. And they begin to believe this nonsense. And so what Bo is doing here is what all the other false prophets do. They are actively shipwrecking the faith of once stable believers. And that's the real damage here. And so this is why this man is so dangerous. And, of course, the other part is that, well, this is crazy. But uh, we got one last clip. What do you say, Bobo? If people think life is random, this is literally God's divine math. Look at this. Historic things happen with Trump. This is impossible. It's absolutely impossible that the U.S. Embassy opened 700 days and seven years to the exact day from Trump's birth. It's impossible that Israel was proclaimed a state 700 days from his birth. I could just go on and on and on, but I just I don't want to waste time here. And so, so what are you saying, Bo? I mean, you, are, are you saying you believe that Trump is actually literally from David's uh, bloodline, or are you saying be. Just, really? He's okay. got to be. He's got to be the, from that bloodline. The bloodline. I don't know what else to say based on what we're seeing happening since Obama specifically was came in the time of troubles based on calculations. So all I know is the math, the math is screaming that the bloodline of David starts with Trump. The bloodline. So and not like a symbolic or whatever, but you really think that he could be in that bloodline. The bloodline. It's got to be the true bloodline. The bloodline. Uh, of David. Now, not surprisingly at all, uh, Bo has been caught before being way off on his numbers. There's a real shocker, right? But here's the real lesson from all of Bo's fantasy of attempted persuasion during his presentation here. Are you ready? Absolutely nothing will come of everything he's teaching here. Nothing will come of this. Other than the fact that he's destroying many people's faith, I mean, nothing else will manifest in way of truth or matter. Bo's only outcome here will be hurting Christians and getting them off of the path and onto deception and delusion. Bo hurts people. He just hurts people. He tickles their itching ears and he separates them from the truth of Jesus Christ. And that's pretty much what I think his mission is. So certainly stay away from this man. He does not care for you and he certainly doesn't care for the truth of Jesus Christ. And so with that, we are done here. 
All right, folks. Well, that's going to do it for this 68th episode of Friday Fruit Clips. Again, thank you so much for watching. As always, I want to ask that you would pray for those who are caught up in the delusion of following these false prophets and these false teachers. Also, pray for the false prophets. We certainly don't want anyone to be lost eternally. Some people disagree with that, but salvation is what it's all about. So please pray for them. Also, if you do want to partner with this ministry, if you want to support me, you certainly can. You could become a Patreon. If you go right down into the description, there's a couple of different ways you can help out and you know, support us in getting the message out there, waking people up from these delusions. And I assure you, thank you. All right, so that's it, folks. Uh, we're getting ready to close down the studio. And the staff is waiting by the door. When we get out of here, we are running over to La Crosse. And apparently, there's a wonderful fish fry over there. We're going to try it out. I guess the walleye is scrumptious. So the wife's here. We're ready. I'm shutting off the lights. Go ahead and set the alarm. And yeah, that's it. So as always, as I'm departing, it is imperative that you understand that as you go, as you continue, please remember to always stay fruity. All right, folks, there you go. God bless you, and we will see you next time. Watch this. I will do wonders in the coming chosen. I will do wonders. I will do wonders in the coming choosing of the leaders.